guys and welcome back to Cosplay for the Beginner and today we are going to be talking about one of the most difficult things of cosplay, putting your costume together. So there are three main ways to do this which I will go over in detail but let's just start with the very first step which is the same for all three picking a cosplay. If you're looking to get into cosplay, odds are you already have a character that you'd like to cosplay as, but if not, don't worry. It's a lot easier to pick out a cosplay than people think. Think of what your favorite series are, whether they're games or anime or comic books, and then think of who your favorite characters are from those series. The hard part from there is figuring out which of those cosplays you want to do. Most cosplayers will wear at least three different cosplays to a convention, but if this is your first time, you may only want to do one, which is totally okay, because Newsflash Guys cosplay is very expensive. So the second step is deciding how you're going to put your cosplay together, and as I said, there are three main methods to this. You can A, make it from scratch, B, buy it, or C, put it together from things that already exist. Making it yourself is kind of the traditional way to put together a cosplay. It's what most cosplayers do. But if you're like me and you have little talent for sewing, it may not be an option. I've also heard that it's cheaper if you make your own cosplay, but I don't particularly think that's true because you have to buy the fabric and the trims and the thread and a whole bunch of other stuff if you've never sewed before and you may end up wasting a bunch of it. And so I really don't think it's necessarily more economical because believe it or not, fabric and trim can be pretty expensive when it's bought in bulk. I personally like to buy my cosplays, which can be done one of three ways. You can go A, online, B, find a local cosplayer who does commissions, or C, go to a tailor shop or a specialty shop. I've never really done the commissions thing, but I have used the other two methods. When it comes to ordering online, I would recommend either ordering from Etsy or Cosplay Food. The nice thing about Etsy is that you're buying directly from an individual so things can be a lot more personal. However, sometimes there won't be anyone on Etsy who sells what you're looking for. On the other hand, Cosplay Foo has a huge variety of costumes, and they even do commissions if they don't carry what you're looking for. My friend Anime Girl and I recently commissioned them to make a decal costume for our friend Decal Ember, and it turned out perfectly. However, one thing you have to be careful about with Cosplay Foo and Etsy is that a lot of times things are shipping from overseas and it can take a long time to get to. Cosplay Foo is based in China, which is actually a co very common place to get cosplays from, and Etsy can be from anywhere in the world. As I mentioned in my last video, things shipping from China tend to arrive much more quickly in the first half of the year than the second. I'm not really sure why, but it has something to do with the customs process. You may also be able to buy your costume from Amazon, but I wouldn't really recommend this. When you buy from Amazon, you what you'll be getting. I bought one costume from there that the skirt was way too big and another from there that fit me perfectly. I love Amazon for a lot of things, not for cosplay. It's just too unpredictable. Now, I bought most of my cosplays online, but with my Prima Clara cosplay, I actually went to a specialty shop. And what I mean by specialty shop is that Prima Clara is a dancer, so I went to a store that made custom costumes for dancers. In terms of price, it's usually a little more expensive to go to a specialty shop. I think the cheapest I've ever paid for a good costume online was $80, although most are $100, $150, unless you're doing something elaborate like Daughter of Evil or Queen Elsa, in which case it can easily be over $200. However, the shop that I went to for my Clara costume had a starting price of $150 for a custom costume. I think mine was actually 200 because I decided to have crystals of light to the skirt. And then finally, if you don't have money for a custom costume or your character has a very basic outfit, then you can put it together from pre-existing clothes. This is how I put my Savannah the Hedgehog costume together, but for most of my costumes, I actually kind of combine the second and third methods. Like, for example, I bought my Prima Clara dress already made, but the shoes, hair ribbon, hair clips, all of that were things that I bought and modified. I guess technically I combined all three methods since I made the prop for that costume myself. Speaking of which, 
Bitch, let's discuss what the parts of your costume actually are. Most costumes have six parts. The outfit, the shoes, the wig, the makeup, the accessories, and the props. And to you guys out there, yeah, you need to wear makeup. Actors wear makeup in front of a camera for a reason. But I digress. Sometimes you can buy your entire cosplay from Cosplay Foo. I was able to buy the shoes, the outfit, the wig, and the accessories for my upcoming Honoka Kosaka costume, all from Cosplay Foo. But I'm gonna go a little more in depth onto where to find the individual parts for each costume. I've already gone over where you can buy the actual outfit, so we'll just skip right to shoes. As far as shoes go, if Cosplay Foo doesn't have what you need, I would recommend finding a pair in a local shoe store or department store that you can modify to be what you need. Like for a cosplay that I'm planning to redo this summer, I bought the new boots from Kohl's. And then there's wigs. Unless you're just like my friend Nicole Ember who cannot stand to wear wigs, wigs make cosplay so much easier. Because whenever Nicole Ember wants to cosplay as Nicole the Echidna, I have to try to straighten her hair and color it orange and I have to use something that's going to wash out so that her hair is not orange the next day when she needs a completely different cosplay. See, you can probably see why wigs are much easier to deal with. I'm not going to mess around with talking about how to style a wig today because that's very complicated and there's a variety of different things you need to do depending on the style. So today I'm just going to talk about where you can buy them. The two places that I personally recommend buying wigs from are Arda and The Five Wits. Arda wigs are very thick, they're very high quality, and all their styles come in a variety of colors. However, I generally find their wigs to be a little bit generic and not necessarily suited to specific characters. The wigs that I bought from the Five Wits are also very high quality, but they're completely different from Arda wigs. Unlike the more generic Arda wigs, the Five Wits wigs are specifically styled to match a certain character or a group of characters. The exception to this are their Gothic Lolita and their Lollipop with the Lois Lights. And while Arda wigs are only thick, the thickness of a Five Wits wig really depends on the character. Some wigs are really thin and wispy, and others are so thick that you can style them without hair gel. The wig that I'm wearing right now is their Donut of the Dawn wig, and you can see it's pretty thick. Both Arda and Five Wits are run by cosplayers, so they really know your needs. As far as buying from cosplay food goes, I only recommend it if you can't find what you need from Arda or the Five Wits, because while the fibers are pretty good quality, their wigs tend to be kind of thin. Also, I've personally never used them, but a lot of people have recommended Epic Cosplay as a place to buy wigs. But again, Arda and the Five Wits are the best places if you can find what you need there. For the same reason as costumes, I don't really recommend buying wigs from Amazon or eBay because you really don't know what you can be getting. A lot of wigs that you get on Amazon are too small for an adult head, or at least an American's adult head, and so it's just a waste of money. I have heard that there are some good shops on eBay, but I personally never tried it. Also, price-wise, a good wig runs from about $30 to $60 on both Arda and the Five Wigs. So now let's talk about accessories and props. A lot of times accessories are really simple and you can just find what you need at a store. If not, you can usually find them on Cosplay Foo, Etsy, or even Amazon and eBay. For example, on Amazon you can find a nice replica of Princess Yona's hairpin that I have not been able to find elsewhere. Props are kind of a different story. Sometimes you can find them on the websites that I just mentioned, but not most of the time. That being said, you'll usually either have to make them yourself or commission somebody to do it for you. I have done both depending on the project. Like for my Savannah the Hedgehog costume, I made the bow staff because it was really simple. I just bought a dowel rod and painted it neat. But for my upcoming Amy Rose cosplay, I commissioned someone to make the hammer because I have no idea how. And then finally, makeup. What you do for your makeup will really depend on the character, but even if your character doesn't wear makeup, like Yona because she's on the run and doesn't have time to put it on, you still need it so that you look good in front of the camera. As far as places to buy makeup is concerned, the top place on my list is Ulta. Ulta has a huge variety of brands and price ranges, and most of the time you can find what you need there. However, if it's something like a really vibrant, 
shade of eyeshadow or a really weird eyeliner color, I would recommend going to ColourPop. ColourPop is still a fairly new brand. They're not very expensive, but oh my gosh, their shadows are amazing. And they don't irritate my skin, which says something because I have incredibly sensitive skin. Finally, on the off chance that you can't buy what you need from Ulta or ColourPop, look in Arda's makeup section. You can find things for special effects or eyeshadow palettes with colors that nobody else carries there. I'll talk more about what makeup brands I would personally recommend outside of ColourPop in a different video. Uh, for now, I think I'm done. I'm not going to talk about how to make a costume yourself because I have almost no sewing ability. If you do want to learn how to make your own costumes, I would recommend going to Joann's where you can take classes on how to make cosplay. Or you can even watch YouTube tutorials on how to do it. But I will keep bringing you information for the absolute novice. For now, sayonara! <laughs>